Welcome to the Living Room Piano course. My name is Mark and I will be your instructor for the entire course. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how you should see this course, what the layout is, how I want you to look at these videos and how to get the most out of it. Therefore, before moving on to the next video, please allow me to explain this shortly to you so you know exactly what to expect, you know if there's anything that you might be able to skip or have to repeat, and basically you get the most out of this course. The idea of this course is that if you have never played piano before, at the end of this course, if you go through all of these sections, you will have the knowledge and skill of somebody that has had private piano lessons one time per week for a year, up to two years, depending on how good you pick it up. And you may be wondering, how is this possible? Well, because these are videos and you're able to go back and repeat stuff. And I'm also gonna give you homework, of course. You're able to get so much more out of an hour of video than of an hour of private teaching because normally when you have a private piano teacher, they come to your house, you go to theirs, and it's like, hey, how have you been, blah, blah, blah. And then you sit behind a piano, he or her may be demonstrating something, and then you have to repeat it, or there's something that you may be learning. And then if you come back next week and there's something that you didn't quite understand, you're gonna have to go over that again, and it's basically just costing a lot of time. Because these are videos, if you don't understand something, you can simply rewind and watch it again, and you'll be able to get that without having to pay another hour of private piano lessons. So in order for you to get the most out of this course, it's very important that you understand the structure and the layout. In every video, you'll be able to see three dots in the side. I'll put that in this video now as an example. And if this is the video screen, you can see it in the video screen right now, there's basically three little circles. And there's a number, let's say one, another number, let's say three, and then there's a letter. So the whole course has a very clear structure. We have four levels, level one, two, three, and four. Every level has different lessons, lesson one, two, three, etc., etc. And every lesson consists of a description, where I'm going to tell you what we're gonna do in the lesson, a theory bit, because you actually want to learn some theory before we're going to practice. And this is helpful if you don't have your piano with you, so you can still watch it. A practice bit where we together are going to practice. I'm going to play something, you're going to play something. I'm going to play something, you're going to play something. And then some homework that I'm going to give you before you can move on to the next lesson. Or sometimes it's something that I want you to come back to later. And I'll explain that in this area. So that's how the whole course is built up. That's one more thing that I want to tell you before we get into this. This is a very in-depth course. As I said, you're going to learn about the same as if you have a private piano teacher for one to two years. It is possible to watch this whole course in one or two months, but it's going to be a lot of work. And if you want to get the most out of this course, I would advise you to get a little notebook and a pen and make little, you know, little scribbles when you find something interesting or if you want to go back. And then use this indication right here. For now, I want to thank you so much for sitting through this boring explanation of the whole course. We're going to move into level one. I will start off with a quick introduction as to what we're going to do in the whole level. And then we will move on to level one, lesson number one. Welcome to Living Room Piano Lesson 1.1. This is the very first lesson of the course, and I'm going to tell you if you need to watch this lesson, why it's useful to watch this lesson, and who can actually skip this lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about two main things. First of all, the layout of the piano, white and black keys, the gaps that are in there, why does it look the way it looks, and also some additional stuff that you need to know if you have never played the piano before. And the second thing I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you the names of all of the notes. Now, if you have a lot of piano experience, you may go like, well, I already know all the notes, so let's move on to the next lesson. Yes, maybe you can, but there's actually quite a lot of note names. So we have the regular notes, we have sharps and flats, but we also have double sharps and double flats. We have things like an E sharp or an F flat, uh, C flat, B sharp. You may not know about that. Also, if you have a lot of piano experience, but you use the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Do system, watch this entire lesson. It is very important that you get used to A, B, C, D, E, F, because we're going to be using that throughout the entire course. 
If you have no idea what I'm talking about, great. This is absolutely the lesson for you to watch. No worries, I will take you by the hand and I will teach you every single thing that you have to know. So just take it easy for now. What's most important for you to know is that this entire course will be using the alphabetical system. This means A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and we will not be using Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Ti, Do. So if you're used to Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Ti, Do, watch this entire lesson and make sure you learn all of these notes. What's also very important to know is that after this lesson, I will assume that you know all the note names. If there are difficult names that I'm going to teach you right now, I will, of course, help you out later in the course, but all of the basic note names, I expect you to know them after this lesson. So if you decide to skip this lesson, that is entirely up to you. I would advise you to watch through it anyway. However, as I said before, if you've been doing a lot of piano already, you probably know all of the notes here. And then you can simply skip ahead to the theory bit or maybe to the homework bit just to check and make sure that you actually know everything that's required before moving on to the next lesson. For now, let's start out with the layout of the piano and then the note names, including all of these weird note names, will begin in the theory bit. We're still in the description right now. Okay, so as you can see already, I'm actually changing the camera angle for whichever purpose we have, making sure that you can see everything you need to see. So this is a piano, if you've never seen one before. This is a digital piano and a keyboard has very thin white keys and these ones are quite thick. Okay, so that's a difference you can identify between a keyboard and a piano. One of the things that you immediately notice is that there's white and black keys and that the white keys are a little bit more wide. Okay, here, wide, the width of the keys and the black keys are a bit more narrow. And we can also see that the amount of black keys is different than the amount of white keys in the same stretch. So if we would look from here until here, for instance, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine white keys, and only one, two, three, four, five, six black keys. So there's more white keys than black keys on the piano. Before we go any further, I want you to head over to the resource files of this course. So before we're moving on, I want you to go to www.pgnpiano.com slash resources, okay? And I want you to download resource number one. It's a PDF free download, of course. And you can simply uh, open that on your computer and then print it out, okay? What you can see there is this PDF file that is currently showing in the screen. And as you can see, we have pianos there, but the black keys aren't actually black, they're empty. And I did this on purpose in this resource file because you can actually write stuff in the empty notes. And therefore it's very easy for you to write note names as we're gonna do later, or little dots or color it in or whatever is needed later in this course. So make sure to download resource file number one. If for some reason you cannot download that because you're watching on an iPhone or an iPad or you don't have a printer or whatever, you're more than welcome to simply draw your own variation, but I would advise you to leave the black keys empty. So for now, what I want you to do is, if you have your resource file, I want you to have a look, and I want you to basically, let me shift the camera a little bit, I want you to find an area like this area right here, okay? This area is repeating quite a lot on the piano. I will zoom out a bit, and you'll be able to see that, okay? So from here, do -do 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 -do, until here, and then from here until here, and the same goes from here until here, okay? So these this area repeats a lot. How can you identify it? You see two black notes and three black notes, two black notes and three black notes, etc. So you take the white note on the left of the two black notes, and then you take the white note on the right of the three black notes. And we end up with this position right here. I will show you that in the screen and I want you to color it in as I did on the screen right now. Okay, so simply take your time and when you're done, you're seeing a bit of keys over here that are colored, whichever color you use, and some keys over here. And we also left 12 keys in the middle, okay? 12 keys that we left. 
and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white keys and one, two, three, four, five black keys. These are the only keys there are on the piano. However, it's repeating quite a lot of times, okay? But this is basically the section we are going to focus on as soon as we move into the theory bit. So now that you have this done, you'll probably see that there's a couple of notes here that are colored in. There's a couple of notes over there that are colored in and you will remain with these notes right here. Two black notes and three black notes and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white notes should still be empty and the rest should be colored in. Now I want you to keep in mind that whether you have 61 keys on the piano or 88 like mine, or even 45, there's so many pianos with different amount of keys, and that's fine. But on every piano, we can actually find this little area of two black keys and three black keys and the five white keys. So now that we have this done, I wanna invite you to have a look at your own piano, if you have a piano in front of you right now, or at the other pianos at the resource file and see if you can find a different area. So if you colored in the area in the middle and I want you to find an area in the left and if you colored in an area on the left, I want you to find an area in the middle or on the right and if you follow, colored in an area on the right, do that. So basically you have three different parts of the piano lighting up. So in your resource file, there's many different pianos and I want you to take the top three and basically color out a lot of the stuff so that these notes remain. Your piano resource file will now probably look something like this. So you can see that the same area is basically lighting up, but it's placed on different parts of the piano. And this is something I want you to get used to, that we have different places where we can play on the piano. So you may be wondering, okay, we have this area right here, we have this area right here. Why is there so many of the same areas? Well, basically, if you listen, The notes are actually the same, but they get higher as they go to the left. So listen, this is the same note. Uh, this is also the same note. Uh, this is also the same note. Uh, this as well, okay? Now, if you haven't played piano before or any other instrument, you may go like, hmm, is that really the same note? Yes, it is, but it's a little bit higher, okay? The sound is a little bit higher. So as we move from the left side of the piano towards the right, notes will actually get higher in pitch. Listen. As we move from the right side of the piano to the left, notes get lower. Okay. However, these notes are the same and these notes are the same. They're just positioned on a different spot of the piano. So now that you have your resource file looking like this, we're actually going to zoom in on just one little bit of the piano right now. Okay, so as you can see, I edited my videos so that there's a very clear area where we're focusing on. And you have the same thing in your resource file, or you can look at your piano and find the same area. Right now, it's time to figure out what these notes are called. So if I play these notes, this sounds very familiar to you probably. Right? And these notes all have names. Now, the names are alphabetical and they reach from A through G. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F and G. And you may expect that the first node is called A. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But that is unfortunately not the case. It will make it very easy because this node over here is actually called C. So we start right here, C, D, E, F, G, and now we do not go to H or H, we go to A, and we have B. Now you may wonder, why does it, why does it sound like it didn't finish? Well, because I haven't played, ah, that final note right there, okay? So this again is a C, okay? You can see there's two black notes, the white note on the left of the black is called the C, and the same right here, two black notes, wide note on the black on the left of the black is called C. So, 
C D E F G A B C D E F G etc. So this time what you can do is take a new piano and you can color in all of the black notes okay so that you actually have this view that we have right now and then what I want you to do is I want you to find the two black notes that are together there's also three black notes somewhere but I want you to find the two and simply place a C on top of that uh, white note on the left of the two blacks and then we're going to follow the alphabetical order so D E F and G okay this is all alphabetical we would start right here A B C D E F G and we can simply continue so your resource file should now look something like this simply enter C D E F G A B C D etc so if we have a look at the piano again C D E F G A B C so these are the most basic node names because there's just a single letter right C D E F G A B they're all single letters from the alphabet and as you can see we have seven letters okay the G is the seventh letter of the alphabet starting on A we would have A B C D E F G and that's seven letters in total now with all of the other node names they're going to be based on these seven letters in the beginning it may be difficult for you to remember which of these nodes has which name because well there's just a lot of things going on a lot of blacks a lot of whites and in the beginning it can be tricky what some people do is they put stickers on the piano and I would definitely not do that okay please don't do that if you really want to do that only put stickers on the C okay so remove all of the letters and only put stickers on the C so here 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 and here but to be honest you don't really need it if you don't use any stickers at all and just watch the piano and keep on watching this course you will learn these notes in one maximum two days and you'll be fine okay so the white note names the most interesting thing about that to me is that whereas most of the music we start on the C right here and then walk up um, it's actually not the A but this is the C okay that's just how it is it's something that you're going to have to learn and remember but it's only seven notes and they're in the order of the alphabet so as soon as you find one note doesn't matter which one let's say this one and you figure out that it's an F then you can just keep on going F G always remember to after G go to A A B C D E F G a b c etc and you can just keep on counting okay so again in the beginning this may be a little bit tricky to you but eventually you will be able to learn all of these notes these are the notes for the white keys now i want to have a look at the notes for the black keys don't worry in the practice bit and in the homework bit i will repeat all of this so if you don't remember it entirely right now that is fine but i do want to move on to the black keys because otherwise we will stay here too long so where the white keys have their own name c d e f g a b c the black keys do not carry a single name or their own name black keys are always being referred to as either being on the left of a white key or on the right of a white key you could also say above a white key or below a white key but if we talk above or below we again have to keep in mind that whole piano getting lower piano getting higher thing so then higher would be to the right again and lower would be to the left so the pitch goes higher to the right and everything is basically up right higher down left lower so therefore every black key has two names higher than white or lower than white to the right of a white key or to the left of a white key so let's start with the names that are basically saying hey this black key is on the right of this white key so this black key is on the right of the C okay you can see that because if we're on the C I have to go to the right right here boop, in order to end up on this black key right here on the piano 
I move from this C, one step up to the right, and I end up on this note. Okay? Whenever we have to go up or to the right or higher, we call that a sharp. And we indicate that with a hashtag. Okay? So, if you know that you want to name this key right here, the black key, this key, then you can say, look, it's a C, but it's not really a C. It's the black key on the right of the C. Okay? So I always start out with C, because I want to refer from C. And then I use this sharp sign, the hashtag. So therefore, this black key is called a C sharp, because we have to move up. C, C sharp. We can do the same with D. Okay, so this black key will be on the right of a D. We have to go up from D in order to get there. D, go up. So D sharp. D, D sharp. Okay, um, and then for the E, that's not really a black note right here. Look, E, there's no black note. So we don't have that. Um, and then we move on to F. Ah, look, there is a black note on the right of F. So this one right here is going to be called F. Um, let's see, there's also black note on the right of G. G. Black note on the right of G. So that's going to be called G something. And then A. And then right here, the A. Okay, so F, G, A, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. Okay, putting those in. Therefore, the black notes, if we want to refer to them as being on the right of a white key, it's C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. So now we have a total of normal letters of seven. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And we also have five sharps, okay? So sharps, five. In total, that's 12. And guess what? When we looked at that thing, you hopefully still have the resource file. And you look at this area, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 notes. So now we already have a way to indicate all of the notes. Unfortunately, we're not going to leave it at that, okay? We are actually going to have to refer to the black notes in different ways as well. So let me explain that to you right now. So instead of indicating a note as being on the right or higher than a white key, we can also say that it's on the left or lower than a white key. So therefore, I want to start here again with this black note. It's on the right of the C, but it's on the left of the D. Okay, so therefore I'm going to write down D. This black note, it's on the right of the D, but it's on the left of the E. So now I can write down E. If I just say D and E, you're going to think that I'm referring to these white notes right here. So that's not possible. So I have to indicate it again. So we call those notes a flat so we have a sharp to go up and a flat to go down. A sharp to the right, flat to the left, okay? So a flat. And you basically indicate that with a, it's not really a B, but it kind of looks like a little B. So put that on the left right here. Okay, so this note is on the left of the D, and therefore I call it a D flat. Uh, this note is on the left of the E, so I call it an E flat. On the left of the F, I don't really have a note right there, okay? So I'm going to move on. On the left of the G, there's a black note again, so that's going to be a G. On the left of the A, there's going to be a black note, so that will be an A. And on the left of the B, there's going to be a black note right here. So we add the little sign to it, okay? And now we have D, D flat, E, E flat, G, G flat, A, A flat, and B, B flat. So if we do that on the piano, D, D flat, E, E flat, G, G flat, 
A, A flat, B, B flat. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so now we're zoomed in. Before we get into the practice uh, round, which is going to be the next thing, I want to quickly run through all of the notes that we learned so far. We learned seven white keys, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And we also learned five black keys, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. But we also learned five different names for black keys, D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. Now I want you to know that at this moment I did not expect you to remember all of these notes. It's quite a lot of information that we're going through right here. But I do want you to actually remember the wide notes. Okay, so please make sure that you know these wide notes. If you can't remember them yet, that's okay. We still have the practice and the homework to go for this lesson. But at the end of the lesson I want you to at least remember the name of the wide notes. And if the black notes are a little rough, that's okay. We will figure that out later. But make sure that at the end of the lesson, you know the wide notes, okay? So before we move on, let me quickly remind you that you can find the entire course on pgmpiano.com. And the best thing is, there are no ads on the videos. Also, the entire course is split out in different chapters and lessons. And if that isn't enough, you can also find the ultimate piano course on there as well, as well as over a thousand lessons for specific songs. So if you want to learn your favorite Ed Sheeran songs or Adele's, Aerosmith or Queen, Yoruma or any other composer that you might like that you can find on the website, you can learn the specific songs right there. There's MIDI lessons, there's chord lessons, there's letter-based lessons. You can find it all on pgmpiano.com. And since you're watching this video right here, I'm willing to give you 30% discount on any of the memberships using the code VIRTUAL. So simply enter the code VIRTUAL and you will get 30% off as long as you remain a member on bgmpiano.com. So let's run through them one more time. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then ending up on C because that sounds nicer. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, or D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. Now you may be wondering, but Mark, why do we have sharps and flats? I mean, why not just call it uh, sharps and leave it at that, or call it flats? We will get to that, actually, in not the next lesson, but the lesson after that, which is called skills. And then I will explain to you exactly why we have two different ways of describing those notes. But for now, I want to show you the chalkboard and actually write down all of the notes that we've done so far and show you a little bit of an issue that we have. So we started out with the regular notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Then we added the sharps C, D, F, G, and A. Sharp. And then we did the flats D, E, G, A, and B. Now you can see my problem. We're missing a note here and here and here and here. Okay, there's four notes that are missing. So the question is, do these notes not exist or did I simply not list them? A lot of people don't really know about these notes. Okay, people have only been playing for a bit or people who've not really played any classical music or, you know, because most of the times songs either have these notes and a few sharps or these notes and a few flats. But what you don't often see is these gaps that we have right here. Okay, so let me draw them in. That would be E sharp and also B sharp. Okay, because these ones were still missing. And here we're missing an F, so F flat, and we're missing C as well, so C flat. So we haven't really discussed them yet. Now there's something weird about these notes. I'm going to zoom in on the piano right now, show you what it is. So the weird thing about these notes, let me quickly 
show you them once more. C flat, E sharp, F flat, and B sharp. The weird thing about these notes is that all of the other sharps are black notes. C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. And same goes for the flats. However, the C flat, the F flat, the E sharp, and the B sharp are white notes. So let's start by playing the C, if you have your piano with you, and otherwise look at the diagram from your resource file or simply look at the video. And the rule for flat is to go one note to the left. So we start right here on C and we go one note to the left, but there's no black note right here. Okay, so we cannot play C flat right here because there's no black note. Instead, we will simply end up on this note. You may say, Mark, but just a while ago you called that a B. That is correct, I did. But just as the black notes have multiple names, so have some of the white notes. So, C, half a step to the left, C flat. The same goes for F. Okay, if we have F flat, we have to go half a step to the left. There's no black note right here, so we will simply end up on this note. We usually call this note an E, but it can also be an F flat. So, F, F flat, C, C flat. Now, how about the sharps? We have E sharp and B sharp that we still haven't uh, talked about yet. So, we start on B. What we have to do for sharp is move half a note up or to the right. Again, there's no black note, so we will end up on this note right here. So, this is a B sharp. B, B sharp. Normally we call this note as C, but in some, ta in some cases the note is being referred to as a B sharp, and we will see that in lesson 1.3. Same we can do for E, so we have E, in order to move up, it's E sharp, okay, move up one note, there's no black note right here, E sharp is right here. Normally we call this F, but sometimes it's being referred to as E sharp. So now we can start again. C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and B sharp. You can hear that it sounds quite nice. Okay, now for the flats we can do the same. So we have D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, a flat, B flat, and C flat. Okay. And that sounds very weird. That is because that's not a skill. We will talk about that a little bit more in lesson 1.3. 21 notes in total. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That's seven. C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp. That's another seven and D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat as the final seven for a combination of 21 notes. So as I said in the beginning of this lesson, there's actually 35 note names and we've only learned 21. So am I gonna bother you with the other 14? No, not at this moment, okay? It's not important yet. We will get to that a little bit later, but I wanna simply give a little hint of what that could be but you don't really have to do anything with this, okay? So a sharp simply means that we're going to move to the right, okay? So we have a note right here, we move to the right. And a flat means that we move to the left. Now, the final notes that you can find are what we call double sharps or double flats. So if you see this sign, sharp, and another sharp, we actually have to move to the right twice and you can also sometimes see double flat and then we have to move to the left twice. We're not going to dive into this right now because it's too much. You've already learned 21 notes and it's quite a lot. So now we're going to practice these 21 notes. And then the double sharps and the double flats we will do another day. Okay, so don't worry about that for now. But I just wanted to include it and tell you that they do actually exist. So if somebody's talking about an E double sharp, they're not talking nonsense, that note actually exists, and sometimes we do have to call it that as well, but we'll get into why 
way later in the course because it's not important for right now. So let's focus on the 21 notes that we just learned and I'm going to give you some homework after that that you have to complete before moving on to the next lesson. Okay, so for this practice bit, what I want to do is if you have a piano, I want you to play along at your piano. If you don't have a piano, I want you to either just watch the video or if you've been able to print out the resource file, I want you to again draw uh, away the rest of the piano and on this side and that side on the left and the right so that you're left over with just 12 notes okay seven white notes again and five blacks i want you to start on c if you remember that so there's two black notes here there's one right note that's where i wanted to start and then ending here so i will demonstrate that in the screen right now that's what i want it to look like if you're working on the resource file and if you're working on a piano, I want you to keep in mind this area, okay? So don't focus on this stuff, it doesn't matter. Just focus on this area. So I will color that in as well right now. So this is the practice area right now. I'm going to give you a little bit of tests and we're going to practice uh, your skill. So what I want you to do is simply follow along. I'm going to um, press some notes and I want you to name which note that is. And we're gonna start simply by playing the white notes so I'm going to play some notes and you have to tell me which note it is. So say that out loud um, and then I will, after that, I will reveal which note it actually is. Okay, so don't wait too long. And just so you know, these are normal notes. So we're looking for A, B, C, D, E, F or G. None of the sharps, none of the flats. We're just doing the regular notes right now. And whenever we're doing sharps or flats, I will tell you. Okay, so don't worry about that for now. Let's just do the normal names. A, B, C, D, E, F, or G is the correct answer. What is the name of this note right here? The name is C. If you said C, you're correct. What about this one? We're looking for F. The name of this note is D. This is an A. This is a G. E. C. Whoops. <laughs> G. And how about this one? It's B. So this is quite easy, but now we're going to spice it up a bit. I'm going to play two notes at the same time, and I want you to call both notes. I want you to name both notes. This is D and G. E and A. C and A. We're back to D and G again. Ooh, nasty sound. F and B. Okay, so you can notice that if you have to name two notes, it's a little bit more tricky. Now I'm going to get rid of these blurred things on the side. So now we have the whole piano to look at and see how you do now. So it's a little bit harder right now. C and E. D and A. B and E. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the entire piece of the piano from here until, let's see, where can I go? On Until here, no, until here, okay? So now it's going to be even harder because we're moving away from this structure. See if you can actually find it out now. What am I playing here? A and F. What am I playing now? D and another D. E and C. B and G. Okay, so if you find this more difficult, I can totally imagine. It's quite hard 
um, now that we're jumping across the piano all of a sudden. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more and then I wanna move into the sharps and the flats. So, how about this? It's C and E. Um, let's see. Oh my god. I hope you, you'll be able to manage this. A, G, and D. Okay, if you got that, very good. Well done on you. B, E, and G. Okay, if you've been able to get this, well done, okay? This is not easy. And if you haven't been able to get this, that's absolutely fine. In the homework bit, I will tell you how you can practice some more. You can watch back if you didn't manage to get all of them, but, um, but well done if you did. So now I'm going to play a couple of different notes, and now whatever the note is that I'm playing, I want you to give me an answer that is sharp. So A sharp, B sharp, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, okay? Whatever it is, the answer is always going to be a sharp. So we're going to do 10 examples here, and then we're going to do 10 flats as well. So let's start right here. This is an F sharp. D sharp. A sharp. Oh my god. It's E sharp. C sharp. F sharp. Here I'm just joking. This is not a sharp. Okay. So I just wanted to test you there for a little bit. So this is not a sharp, but this one is. What is this one? G sharp. Again, E sharp. B sharp. D sharp. Okay, so I hope you found a couple of them. Um, if you did, well done. If you didn't, that's okay, okay? These sharps and flats are really quite difficult to learn in the beginning, but you will be able to get them quite soon. So now I'm going to point out a couple of more notes, and whichever note I point out is going to be a flat. So it can be A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, or G flat. Whichever note I'm playing, it's gonna be one of these. So let me know. This is A flat. E flat G flat C flat D flat Okay, let's see. I'll do four more. A flat B flat F flat D flat G flat I hope that you managed to get a lot of these. If you didn't, that's okay. Mainly focus on the white ones. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, that's the most important bit the sharps and flats will follow naturally later. So now we're going to do a fun little game. I'm going to call out any note, and this can be any of the 21 notes. So it's going to be the reverse. Instead of me playing a note and you having to tell me which one it is, I'm going to call it out and you have to play it. And I just want you, if you're, if you're behind the piano, just play along with me. And if you're not, then simply point it out on your resource file. Let's start with the uh, regular notes, and then we'll make it a little bit more interesting later on. So, I want you to play an A. Let's find the A. This is the A. Okay, so as of now, I'm just going to be 
calling out the notes and then I'll give you three to four seconds to find it and then I will play it and I will call out the next one. E. G. C. A. D. B. G. E. C. F. G. D. B. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to include sharps and flats. I'm going to call out any of the 21 notes that we just learned and you're going to have to play that. So I'll give you a little bit more time in the beginning and then I will go quicker and quicker as we're moving on. Okay, I hope you're ready. We're gonna do 50 notes right now. I'm gonna give you five seconds between each note in the beginning. Then we'll drop to about four, three, two, and one. One is gonna be extremely quick, man. If you're able to keep up with that, I would be so impressed, but I, but I really wouldn't expect it and that's okay. But with the five seconds, I hope that you will. So here we go, are you ready? Let's start right now. I want you to play D. G sharp. A. E flat. B. D sharp. G. C flat. A flat. D sharp. C. F flat. F sharp. E. B flat. C sharp. A. F flat. F sharp. D B flat C flat G sharp F D flat G flat E flat C flat A sharp D sharp G D A 
E flat F sharp B sharp E sharp A flat G flat D flat D sharp F sharp B F G sharp E C D sharp A flat G flat E G flat D flat A flat B sharp E sharp A flat G flat and D Wow, I hope you did okay. This is very hard to do. Right now, let's move into the homework bit. Okay, so I hope you did very well with the practice bit. I can imagine that this being your first piano lesson, it may have gone quite hard. And I want you to understand that in the beginning, everything that's new, it takes a little bit of time to learn. So don't worry about it too much if this went really quick. I only expect you to remember the wide notes and if for whatever reason you're able to remember a few of the sharps or flats, super, super good. But if you only know the wide notes, in fact, if you only know one wide note, let's say this one right here, then you can figure out the rest of the notes. And because you now know that sharps and flats are going up and down, you actually, you're able to figure out every single note on the piano, right? So if you only know one note, if you only remember one note, you're able to figure out the rest. I can imagine, again, that this went pretty quickly. I also want you to keep in mind that we have loads and loads to learn. I promise you that I would teach you the same or more than a private piano teacher will teach you in a year. And I only have 40, 50 lessons to do that. So I have to kind of hurry up. These are video lessons, so you're always more than welcome to rewind and watch it again if at any moment you have issues um, you forgot something, you want to go back, you're always more than welcome to go back to a video and watch it again or watch pieces of it again. For instance, this practice bit that we just did, it's very easily to find that due to the P that was in the screen. Right now, change to H for homework, right? So right now we're in the most favorite department, the most favorite section of the lesson, the homework. Nobody likes to do homework, but I try to make it fun and cool for you. So. If you go to resource file number two, you will find this file that's on the screen right now. And you will see that all of the notes that we just learned are on there. You can also see dotted lines. What I want you to do is I want you to print this resource file and cut along the lines. And what you will end up with is 21 neat little cards with the note names on there. And then you can actually shuffle them and um, you can put them on your piano or you can take a little ball and put them in simply draw one out and then you have to play that on the piano and see if you can find it okay another thing that you can do which is really fun is to shuffle them and give them to your mom or to a friend or to your sister or an uncle or daughter and they have to flip through and you have to actually play that note you can also decide to only do the white notes by simply just taking the white note names or only do flats or only do sharps or shuffle everything together and you can do it like that. So that's the first thing I want you to do. What is very helpful if you want to do it with somebody else is to keep that piano that you see on top of the resource file separately as well so you can easily check or they can easily check if you manage to play the correct note. Um, you can put that on the piano or you can lay that flat play a note and simply turn it over and check if you manage to find the right note. I want you to do this a couple of times. Let's use the little cards, okay? And here's exercise number two. You close your eyes, you hit any random note on the piano, let's say this one, and then you open your eyes and you look and you say, mm, I think that's D, okay? And then again, you can take the resource file to check it or if you simply know all the note names, that's cool as well. And you check and verify if that's the correct note. So you go again, bloop, this note right here. Ah, I think that's a G. 
you check the file, oops, it's not correct, it's actually an F. Okay, so number two, exercise number two, is eyes closed. Okay, you close your eyes, you play a random note. Exercise number three, you can do it with one or with two or with both. What you do, you close your eyes, you play a random note, you can call it out if you want to, you don't have to, but I want you to find the same node a bit to the left or a bit to the right, depending on what you want. So you play this, you say, ah, it's a D, and now I find another D right here, there. Or if you played it here, find another D right there. If you're doing the card game, I want, if somebody calls out a name, let's say they say B flat, you simply play a B flat, and now you want to identify another B flat as well maybe over here okay number three is change the note and that's it that's all the homework i have for you so really check out resource file number two take a scissor uh print them out scissor and you have those little cards and use them you can use them yourself by simply putting them in a bowl and draw a random card and try to play that on the piano you can have your sister read them to you or your brother or your mother you can also decide to practice with your eyes closed Simply keep your eyes closed, play a random note, and figure out which note that is. That's the reverse, and you can change the note. Okay, so you can play a note, and now you have to find the same note somewhere else, and play that again. These are the three exercises that I have for now. I want you to at least try these exercises once before moving on to the next lesson, and then I want you to try these exercises again, you know, throughout the next week, as long as you need to, in order to actually learn all these notes. If you notice that your flats are okay and your normal notes are okay but you have issues with the sharps, simply take out all of these cards and only use the sharps and practice with those, okay? So you can do that very easily and you can make it your own thing. You will know what you need extra help with. If that's certain notes that you find hard, only put those in the, in the little box or in the little ball and only practice for those notes until you know you can at least play all of the white notes easily and maybe also the blacks. That would be really awesome. For now, I wanna move on to the second lesson where I'm actually going to teach you your first song that you've played on the piano. Welcome to Living Room Piano Lesson 1.2. I hope you learned everything in the previous lesson. If you didn't, let me quickly sum up what we did. We learned the names of 21 notes on the piano all of the regular names, the sharps and the flats. This lesson is going to be a little different. If you don't know the note names yet, that's okay. If you have trouble to remember them, it will get better and better every time you watch one of these videos. I also hope that you're able to keep up watching at least one of these videos every week. But if you can do a couple more, maybe two, three or four a week, that would be really awesome. It's your time, it's your piano level, it's all up to you. So if you have some time, if you have a Sunday off or whatever, maybe watch two lessons, you know, just to get things flowing a bit more quickly. Or you can take some time to review a lesson that you watched in the past. In this lesson though, I'm going to teach you how to play C Mist. It's a song, it's really cool. I'm going to play it for you first and then I will teach you how to play this song. The reason I wanna teach you to play a song already is because it's fun to get started with things and this is a bit of a classical kind of sounding song but it's actually really beautiful relatively easy to play and this will get you started playing and the nice thing about this song is that though it's a beginner song we actually play the left and the right hand on the piano and you don't have to really play them at the same time that much so it's not very difficult yet um, we play left right left right and you will hear that, it's really nice. And my goal is that at the end of the lesson, you're able to play this song, maybe slowly, maybe a little bit quicker, depending on how soon you pick it up. The main challenge will probably be to remember what to play, but hopefully you'll be able to do that. So I'm gonna play it first. You don't need to watch the piano, so I'm gonna leave the camera right there. Just listen to the song. And the main point of this video is so that you learn to move your fingers in the correct way, and it's not really about learning that song, but that's just a little bonus for you. So at the end of this video, maybe you can play this song for your friends and family, and they'll be surprised what you've been able to do. Here we go, C Mist.
Okay, so that was C Miss. I hope you enjoyed listening to that. Right now, it's time for you to learn to play this song. So we're going to zoom in on the piano a little bit, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how we're playing that song. Of course, I'm going to break it up into little pieces so you don't have to learn the whole thing in one go. Let's have a look at the first piece right now. So before we're getting into the nitty gritty of how to play this song, it's very important that where you yesterday learned the name of the notes, C, D, E, etc. We also need to know where we're navigating on the piano. Okay, but there's quite a lot of notes still left over there. And then there's also, whoop, almost falling, quite a lot of notes over there. So where are we on the piano? Your right hand is going to be on this C. And we call this the middle C because it's located in the middle of the piano, actually. Okay, depending on which uh, piano you have, how many keys there are, that key may be in a different spot. So what I want you to do is I want you to locate a couple of C's that are in the middle and listen. And now listen to which C you're playing because we're, we want to find this sound, okay? This is the one we want. And your left hand is going to sort on the other one, okay? So that's the sorting position these two C's right here. Now I want you to have a look at the left hand first and we're going to play three notes. The C, the E and the G. Okay, we're not going to play them at the same time, we're going to play them one at a time. Okay, like that. You can play them like this or you can play them by holding them. We're going to be using the pedal of the piano as well, so right here one of them, the right pedal, if you have multiple, is the sustain pedal, and you're going to use that to make the notes sound longer. But we will learn a little bit more about that later on, so you don't have to worry about that now. If you're having trouble to use that pedal, or you don't know how, that makes a whole lot of sense. So with you, the notes are going to be sounding a bit more... a bit more like that, okay? And that is okay because if you don't know how to use the pedal yet, um, there's no other way around it. But if you do press the pedal, it's going to sound a bit more like this, okay? So if you want to start to use the pedal already, basically we're going to play in these little... and then... okay? And what you do is you simply you press the pedal before you have a piece. So I press it, I play... And now I release it, and then I press it again. And I release it, and I press it again. Okay, like that. So you can experiment with that a little bit already if you want. But mainly I want to focus on what our hands are doing, not so much the feet. Okay, so if it sounds like this, I'm happy with that as well. We're going to start with the left, as I said. So you play C, E, G. And we're going to do that three times in a row. So, wait a bit, wait a bit, and play it again. You can also go slower. Like that, okay? Practice that a couple of times if you need to. But keep in mind that when we play this song, there's going to be a break. So you play, wait a little bit, wait a little bit, like that, okay? And it's going to be like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? That's how we're going to count that. Right hand is going to start on this note with the thumb, and we're going to play this little thing. Okay, that's what we're going to play. So we start on the C, and then we play D, E, G. Okay, so C, D, E, G. Now, the way this fits in the counting is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. Okay, let's slow that down a little bit. 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we actually do is we play this once, and then we move the thumb from the C to the B. But these fingers are gonna stay the same. So the first time it's C, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we move to B, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this entire bed, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. C, wait, wait, D, E, G, B, wait, wait, D, E, G. And now we're moving to B flat. Okay, so. Like that. Now is the cool bit. We're going to combine left and right. So let me move the camera a little bit more here. There we go. We're now going to combine left and right. You know that we have this one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, left was one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember that? Actually, let me move it a little bit more. Here we go. Remember that? So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So left is being played on one, two, and three. The right hand is being played one, two, three, four, five, six. So you play left on one, two, and three, and right on one, four, five, and six. This means that left and right are being played together on the first note. So play them together and then left. Okay? So we'll be together, left, left, right, right, right. Okay? So together, left, left, right, right, right. Okay, so do this slowly a couple of times. We can go very slow in the beginning, that's fine. Play them together, left, left, right, right, right. Do that again. Together, left, left, right, right, right. Let's do the counting. One. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The right hand is playing and then moving to the B. So let's give that a go. So we're going to play the same in left because left keeps on repeating the same. And right, we're going to change to this B. So let's go slowly. Two, three, four, five, six. Now change right to the, to the B and then we do the same. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back to the beginning. So together, left, left, right, 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 together, left, left, right, right, right. If that's going too quick for you, let's do it a little bit slower. Together, left, left, right, 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 together, left, left, right, right, right. I'm playing this without a pedal right now, by the way, just so you know, okay? So once more, together, left, left. Okay, now we went up to the B flat, remember? So right is starting here, there, and there. Okay, so left is still gonna play the same, and now we play the B flat. So we play them together, left, left. So let's get all the way up to there. Go 
going to B flat like that okay let's do that one more time very slowly and then I'll do it one more time a little bit quicker and then even quicker see if you can keep up now if at any moment you cannot play that quick without making a mistake slow it down okay it's better to slow it down and practice it gently slowly speed will come the most common mistake is that people want to go too quick too fast they will learn it the wrong way and then it's very hard to get it out later okay there's one song that i learned to play all the way in the beginning of my piano career and i messed it up the way i, I practiced it and up to this day i'm having issues to play that song correctly because my fingers are used to the way i played it so rather go slow here we go slow a little bit faster and then a little bit faster Now let's go a little bit faster. Like that. And even a little bit faster. Okay, now we've reached an interesting part of the song. Because up until here, the right hand is just playing. Okay, and the left hand is playing the same the whole time. But now, after playing this B flat, the right hand is moving to A. Okay, so A, G, F instead of the D, E, G that we have been doing. Okay, A, G, F. So this is like this together left left right 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 the system is still still the same b flat e g a g f okay so the left hand is playing this for three times the right hand is moving c b b flat okay those are the three times that we play so let's do that one more time. Okay, and we end up right here. Okay, so, so let's combine that once more by playing it slowly and then a little bit quicker. And then we will actually change the left hand so far. Okay, so here we go, slowly. that a little bit quicker there we go okay so now what's gonna happen let me play the next piece and then we'll dissect it a little bit so we come here Okay, so the left hand is doing three different kind of things right now. We play... This, okay? Left is playing F, A, C. F, A flat, C. D, F, A. Okay, so let's do that a couple of times to get used to it. Like that. Okay. Slower. Like that. 
I want you to keep in mind that when I'm playing this, there's a camera between my face and my hand, and I have to sit back from the piano a little bit further than I usually do. Um, I'm also trying to make sure that I play in a way that you can see, so sometimes I will be holding my hand back a little bit further than I would usually do. So do not pay too much attention to how my hand is positioned, okay? Don't focus on that too much, um, but you can look at where my fingers are touching the notes, like I'm trying to play with the correct fingers as much as I can. Um, also, I have very small hands, so sometimes it may be easier for you to play it in a different way, but this is how I like to play it. So, F, A, C, F, A flat, C, D, F, A. And this is the same principles in the beginning here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay? The right hand was coming in here from A, G, F. And we are now going to play E, D, C, D, E, D, C, D, E. Okay? So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Okay? You may already be noticing that when I play my left hand separately or my right hand, the song sounds completely different as when I play them together. And this has to do with the fact that when you play them together, you get certain chords that are being played and you don't need to know anything about that for now, but if you're practicing yourself and you think, hmm, it sounds a little bit weird, um, it, it sounds different when he plays it or whatever, maybe this has to do with the fact that when you play these notes separately, when you play your hands separately, the song sounds different and that makes a whole lot of sense, okay? So again, Royd is coming in here, A, G, F, and then basically we land here on E, D, C, D, E, D, C, D, E. So we came from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Okay, so that's where we are right now. So now the tricky bit. Before the left hand was playing the same thing, but now the left hand is changing. Okay, so let's take it nice and easy and see how you go. Left is starting on this F and right is starting on the E. Okay, one of the things that you may have noticed is that the left hand is playing this C and then the right hand wants to play this C as well. So make sure that your thumb gets out of the way in time for your right-handed thumb. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Now, even though the left hand is changing here, the right hand stays in the same area, okay? So maybe right now it's uh, advisable to have more attention on your left hand than on the right, because the right hand is staying in the same grip on the same notes the whole time throughout this area. So one more time, slowly, and then I'll speed it up a little bit, and then we will connect piece number one and piece number two very slowly, speed that up a little bit as well. So. Okay, like that. Little bit quicker. Like that. If you're having issues to play this, keep in mind, this is one of the first piano songs you're most likely learning, if not the first, and you do not have to go as quick as the video is going. Okay, I'm explaining this, but if there's any part where you go, okay, I want to pause the video, 
I want to practice a little bit more, you can always pause the video. You can always rewind a little bit, go back to a part where we we're going before. So don't worry about that for now. Let's um, combine these two parts very slowly. Try and play along. But if you can't watch me play it and then pause the video, try it yourself a couple of times. And then if you manage, super good. If you don't manage, simply move back into the video a little bit and watch it again and pause it and try it until you get it, okay? I would really like you to get this part um, before we move on to the next part. Here we go, super slow, and then I'll do it a little bit quicker. This was the playthrough until where we are right now, um, slow and then a little bit quicker. And you can keep your own pace, you really do not have to go anywhere near as quick as I'm going, you can take it easy, but try to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. If it's helpful to you, if it is not helpful, don't count and just play. We're almost done with the first part of this song, so let's finish it up. We ended up right here. Okay, so now the right hand is going to play D, C, A, okay? So the same as where we moved from, we moved from B flat all the way over here, okay? We went a whole different course, we're doing the same here. Okay, moving to D, C, A. So let's put that at the end of what we've been playing so far. So here. Okay, D, C, A. Let me do that one more time a little bit slower so you can actually play along. Here we go. Just like that, okay? And now we have to finish up this section by playing this, okay? You cannot see the left hand, so I'm gonna change the camera a bit. There we go. So left was here on D of A, and we're going to jump down to G, B, D. Only have to play that once. And the right hand is going to play G, A, B, D. So it's still the same pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's combine these. Like that, okay? So let's do the whole bit that we did so far, okay? If you still want to practice small little bits, pause the video right now, and then I'm going to play through the whole bit th that we did so far.
Okay, so what I just did is I played this twice, one time slowly, one time a little bit quicker, and what you actually may have noticed is that that's how the song is actually going. You play this first bit two times, okay? Of course you don't play it at different paces. You can if you want to, if you want to get used to it. Play it slowly and then a little bit quicker. But normally when you play this song, it's going to be one pace. Okay, whatever, something like that, depending on how quick you want to go. And you play this whole first section that we just learned in one go. Now the cool thing is, there's one variation in the song, so we're going to teach you that in a bit. And then all you have to do is end up with the end of the song. Okay, this little... Ending up right there, okay? So if you know how to play everything we did so far, if you're doing a good job, then congratulations because you've already nailed probably 70% of the song, okay? Because the, the next part is just a little variation, but the idea is going to be the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, etc. So you're already used to that. We are just going to change the specific notes you're playing. Okay, so have a little break, get a glass of water, pause the video, and then come back to learn the variation that's happening in this song, and then eventually the ending as well. We have about 15 minutes left in this lesson, in this practice bit, before I'm going to show you the homework for this lesson. Good, so I hope you have a clear mind. I hope you took some water, a little bit of a break. I did so as well, um, even though you're not able to see that in the video. Actually, I took a lot of break. This is really important, guys. Sometimes when you're playing the piano, um, you may be frustrated to learn something, or it's just not going your way. And then what you should do is take a five or ten minute break. And if it's really not working out, then sometimes you take a full day break, okay? But um, it's very important. When things are not going the way you want them to go, if you keep on going, your muscle memory, especially when playing piano, but it's also with different parts of life, of course, but especially when playing the piano, your fingers will learn the wrong thing. The muscle memory will store the wrong movement in your fingers. So if you're stressed and it's not working out and you keep on making the same mistake, you're either playing too quick or you did not take a break at the moment where you should take it. So if you realize that, just stop. Take that break, a little water, a little toilet break, or maybe even just wait a whole day before you try it again. That's okay. So now we are going to put in this bit that I really like. I'm going to play it first so you can listen and see it a little bit. What is basically happening is that we start with the same thing. Okay, up until here. But now, instead of playing the G, we're going to the F to make it dramatic. Okay, you hear that? And then we start a new section right here on the G. So, simply run down your fingers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we start the new section right here. Like that, okay? Okay, let's have a look at this. Let's start with left. You play G, B flat, D. G, B flat, D flat. F, A, C and F, A flat, C, okay? So quite an interesting bit, and it's again the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Now, if you're not used to playing the piano, this may be hard for you to remember. Um, in a couple of lessons, this will be very easy for you to remember because we're just playing some really recognizable patterns in the left hand, but you don't recognize them yet. 
and that's okay. So take your time to learn this. Play along with me. G, B flat, D, four, five, six, G, B flat, D flat, four, five, six, F, A, C, four, five, six, F, A flat, C, four, five, six. One more time, slowly, without me talking through it. Okay, right, as I said, it's coming in here. And now we're just going to play this, okay? So as soon as that G is being played, F, E, F, G, F, E, F, G, F, E, F, G. So that's three times already, and now just play the F, okay? So G, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Okay, you only play that four. Let's do it one more time. Okay, now the moment of truth. Let's combine them. Okay, I'm going to combine them relatively quickly right now. But then I will slow it down, but I just want to show you one time how it combines, okay? So we start right here, let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four like that okay so let's do that very slowly and then a little bit quicker after that so you can play along and again if this doesn't work these things in the left hand may be a little bit tricky for you in the beginning okay so just take it easy with yourself as well you're doing a very good job even watching this so um just stick in there and you'll be fine okay we're gonna do it slowly and then a little bit quicker Okay, just like that. Now, don't worry. At the end of this lesson, I'm going to play through this whole song very slowly. So you'll be able to um, have a look at how it all fits together then. But I guess you have a pretty good idea already. You play the first bit. And then after having done that two times, we move on here. Okay, so let's continue on right here. we're doing the right hand you already know okay so you already know that ending up right there the left hand is a little bit different in the sense that we used to play F A C F A flat C and D F A okay so remember this okay that little bit right there Right now, the left hand is going to play D, F, A, D, F, A flat, and then back to D, F, A. Okay, so it's just the left hand that is changing. Before we were here, F, A, C, F, A flat, C, and D, F, A. 
And now we're starting already on DFA. DFA flat. And DFA. And then we move down to GBD. Okay? So this bit, let's start right here. This is where the transition happens, and now... Like that, okay? So one more time, slowly. And again, this whole piece is one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Etc. And it keeps on going like that. Okay. So let's do this whole bit that we just did very slowly, and then we will finish up this song because that's all there is left to it. So here we go, let's do it slow. So what we're doing right now in the song, we, we finish right here. We're going to do the first bit again. Until there. And now what we're going to do four times is with the left C, A, G. Okay, that's with left, and now with right, C, A, G. So, you do this right after each other, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're gonna have to move, so let's move the camera a little bit. Here we go, so I was going right here. Move over, cross over my left hand, wow, that looks so cool if you do that. Okay, so. C, A, G, C, A, G, and now here, you cannot even see that on the camera anymore, damn, this is going really high. Right here is where I finish up, so here. And then finishing up. Like this, okay? So how do you do that once more? C, A, G, C, A, G. And you do that two more times. So C, A, G, C, A, G. Cross the left hand over, do C, A, G. Now the right hand. And now it's up to you. You can play that high C with your left hand. And now this is cool. You're going to play C, G, C and E at the same time to finish up. If you can do that, okay? So, like that, and that's the entire song. So, I'm going to play this entire song for you right now, relatively slowly, 
and um, you can see if you can play along or you can just use it as an instruction kinda and then we move on to the homework which for this lesson is not going to be that much so make sure to stick around and listen and look at how I play this song and then uh, stick around for the homework It'll be like another two minutes and then we're done with the lesson for today Okay, great. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson so far. This was the practice bit right now. Let's get into the homework. We didn't really do any theory in this lesson per se, but there's going to be a lot of that in the next one. So don't worry about that. The homework. Well, the homework for this lesson is quite obvious. I want you to practice this song and you don't have to be able to play it perfect. You don't have to be able to play it up to speed. What I want you to do is I want you to see how far you can get see if you when you play this slowly if you're able to get used to the one two three four five six one two three four five six one two if you can get used to that kind of thing because basically the whole song is in that one two three four five six kind of setup right see if you can get used to that um have a little bit of fun make sure to watch this lesson again if you're having trouble 
or scroll back to a part where you're having trouble with maybe the uh, the new section okay so we started with the first section and we had to repeat that and then we play the, the next section which is a little bit more tricky maybe than the first one so make sure to check that out for now I want to thank you for watching thank you for keeping up with the course in the next lesson we're going to discuss scales this is very 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 important so make sure to watch that lesson you're going to learn a lot and there's going to be a whole lot of aha moments you know like oh now i get it that's going to be in the next lesson lesson 1.3 of this living room piano course for now get some rest try to play this the next time you're behind the piano and i will see you in the next one so before we move on let me quickly remind you that you can find the entire course on pgmpiano.com and the best thing is there are no ads on the videos. Also, the entire course is split out in different chapters and lessons. And if that isn't enough, you can also find the ultimate piano course on there as well, as well as over a thousand lessons for specific songs. So if you want to learn your favorite Ed Sheeran songs or Adele's, Aerosmith or Queen, Yoruma or any other composer that you might like that you can find on the website, you can learn the specific songs right there. There's MIDI lessons, there's chord lessons, there's letter-based lessons. You can find it all on pgmpiano.com. And since you're watching this video right here, I'm willing to give you a 30% discount on any of the memberships using the code VIRTUAL. So simply enter the code VIRTUAL and you will get 30% off as long as you remain a member on pgmpiano.com. Hi, welcome to lesson 1.3 in the Living Room Piano course. In this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you about the major scales. This is one of the most important things to understand when playing the piano. If you don't have a clue about this, it's going to be very hard to progress through a high level. So what I did when I started to play at the piano, I was around 17, and all I did was learning songs, 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 and just playing, playing, playing. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? That's cool. It's way better than just learning boring music theory or really stupid, simple songs. But eventually, if you want to take that next step, you are going to have to learn something about music theory, like in this case, scales. So that's what we're going to do right now. And before I tell you a little bit more, let me just remind you that the whole idea of this course is that every lesson is a little block. And if you watch that whole lesson in one go, in one sitting, that will be most beneficial to you because I structured these lessons so that if you start, you may have some questions, but then at the end of the lesson, hopefully all of the questions are answered. So yes, these lessons are quite long, 45 minutes to an hour, but it really helps you if you sit down, find a moment every week or maybe twice per week where you go, okay, I'm gonna watch this entire lesson and that actually really helps you in the learning process. So for now, what about these skills? So have you ever been singing this song uh, in your head or just out loud? So let's say, um, same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. And then you look up that song because you wanted to, you know, you say, oh, that's a cool song, I'll look it up. And then you hear the person singing, same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. Where you go, oh, like, why is that different? Right? So there's people that go, same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. And they have, same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. Same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. Same bad, but it feels just a little bit bigger now. Now, which one is correct? Now, first of all, I'm sorry I had to sit through that. But apart from that, which one is correct? They, they they pretty much all sound okay, right? They go like, uh, maybe it's that one, maybe it's that one. Okay, they all sound horrible because I'm singing them. But apart from that, you go, ah, I think it's that one. So if I translate that to piano, let's see what happens. So is that one correct? Or... Or is that one correct? They all sound right. They all sound like that's how the song is supposed to go. So how is that possible? Well, the short answer is I'm playing these songs and I was singing these songs in different keys. And keys are based on skills. So that's what we're going to learn today. 
the different major skills, how you can identify them, how you can figure them out, and eventually, later on in this course, you don't have to worry about that at all, but we are actually going to learn how to take a song that's written in a certain key, or a certain scale, and transform that to another scale, so we can actually change the song. This is very helpful, let's say that you want to play the piano and somebody is singing, and um, it's a girl instead of a guy, and the song was written for a guy, and so the girl has issues, because if she sings at the same key that the guy who wrote the song was originally singing in, it's either going to be too low for her, like, same bad bot feels just, you know, it's way too low, or it's going to be way too high for her, because she picks another octave higher. So what we can then do is go like, okay, well, let's write that song down a little bit, or let's push it up a little bit. But not a whole chunk, okay? So that's just one of the things that you can do when you know your skills. We're gonna do that later on in the course. Right now we're going to start by learning all of the major skills. Okay, so we're in a theory bit again today. There is going to be a practice bit as well, but it will be a little bit later on. Let's start with the theory. The first thing I would like you to do is to head over to your resource files on pgmpiano.com slash resources and you can download file number three. And I'll show it in the screen right now. And what you will see is you see three pianos and, um, and you see that you can actually add the name of the scale that you're writing down. You can add the notes that are in the scale and, and you can also color in stuff in the piano. So what I want you to do for this lesson is print this file six times if possible. Um, if you don't have a printer or if you're watching this on mobile, you cannot download it or whatever, that's absolutely fine. You can uh, simply draw a piano yourself, draw an empty piano yourself. Um, you may not want to do that 18 times those. So see what you're doing right there. But ideally, you can print the resource file. If you don't want to write along, it's absolutely fine as well. It's just a tool that will help you to understand this a little bit better. But if you say, Luke, I'm sitting in the train and I'm watching this on my way to work or to school, no problem, you can follow this without the resource file as well, but it will help you a little bit more. Cool? So I'm going to demonstrate to you what I want you to do. So the whole idea of a key or a skill is to basically indicate which notes are allowed to be played and which notes aren't in a certain song. So as you still remember, hopefully, from the previous lessons, let me rotate that camera a bit. If we looked at this area right here, we have... 12 notes. If we play all 12 of them, that's not going to work in a song. Generally speaking, and for now we're going to stick to that as well, we will only have seven notes in one song. This may be quite a relief to you because having only seven notes in there is actually really nice because it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to pick from 12, you only have to pick from seven. So as you will also remember, we had 21 note names in the lesson about node names. So you may think, but now you're talking about 12. Yes, so we have 12 keys, so once more, 12 keys, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, but we have 21 names because a lot of these keys have double names. There's only three keys that don't have a dub double name up until now, okay? So if this is a bit confusing to you right now, don't worry, it will become easier and you will get all of this stuff later. So for now, we have 12 notes. As I said, you're only allowed to play seven in a song, which means we're going to play seven notes and we're going to remove five notes, okay? So there's five notes that we're not playing in every song, there's seven notes that we are playing and there's a total of 12. The first thing you have to realize is that when we talk about skills, major skills, every node has to be in the skill once and it can never be in that twice. So you may go like, but dude, you were just talking about that we leave five notes out. Yes, so now I'm only talking about the letters. So the letters that we have are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And all of these letters have to be in every scale once and they're not allowed in twice. Now there's one exception. When we are going to draw these skills on our resource file, you will note that 
below the piano there's eight spots okay there's eight spots and that's because when we practice our skills we always end up on the same note as where we start so that note isn't really part of the skill it's just more that we want to have the same end and the same beginning so if this was the a major skill for instance i would simply add another a at the end so that when we play it we can finish up on an a and start on an a otherwise it would sound like this and you go oh, come on play the final note oh yes there we go okay so therefore we always have the same note at the end as in the beginning when we write down our skills on our resource file so what i want you to do is on the resource file you have the piano right and then you have here skill name blah 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 and then you have the notes that are in the skill so the first thing i want you to do is to pick the first seven pianos okay so you have two so you take three sheets of paper and on the first piano you you write a major okay that doesn't fit <laughs> so what you write there is a major okay on the second one you're going to write the second piano you're going to write b major and you're going to continue this all the way until g major so there's going to be seven pianos that we use right now um, first one is A major and you write it all the way until G major. Every piano gets their own scale. So what I want you to do now is leave the piano empty. We're not going to use that yet. We're just going to write down these notes below the piano. Now if you followed along, you have seven pianos where you put a name in now. Scale name, okay? A major, B major, C major, etc. What I want you to do is when you have these eight notes that you can enter, underneath your piano on the first position of the first piano I want you to put A and on the last position I want you to put A as well okay and this is of course for the piano where you wrote down A major scale now for the next one I want you to write down B and B okay and I would like you to continue this process for all of the pianos. So for the A major skill, you have A and A. For the B major skill, you have B and B, etc. Okay, let me show you an example of what that would look like right now. So the first piano is A major skill, second piano B major skill, third piano C major skill, and we have the first letters filled in. And now what I want you to do, and keep in mind, we are just starting to enter these skills, so they're not going to be complete yet, but these are the correct steps to follow, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to take some time to fill up the entire scale on all of these pianos. How are you going to do that? With alphabetical order. So, A major, you're going to write B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you already had the A. For B, you're simply if you look at the alphabetical order up top, you're going to start with C. So, like that, okay? So, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. We can do this for C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? And I want you to do this for all of the seven pianos that we are doing right now on the resource file. So, at the end, you will have a different letter starting but the uh, order will always be alphabetical. Okay, so I hope you pause the video. If you haven't done so, do that now and, and, and finish up your resource file. So now we have a bit of a problem. The only skill that is actually correct on your resource file right now is the C major skill, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And if we have a look at the piano, that makes sense. Listen. Okay. Now, any of the other skills, for instance, the A major skill that you have written down like that, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. If I would play that, okay, that's a weird sound because we want all of the major skills to sound like this. Okay, so that's a little bit weird. 
We eventually want to work towards the, the spot where C sounds like this and A sounds like this. Okay, so this means that there's going to be a couple of black notes that we will have to introduce in these scales. So what I want you to do for now is I want you to have a look at your piano in the, um, in the resource file and I want you to color in the C major scale already on the piano because that one is correct. So what I would do is I would simply put little dots. So if you have the piano right here, so if you have the piano right there, you simply put little dots on all of the notes that you have to play. Okay. And you only do this from C to C. Okay. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I will show you that in the resource file right now. So now the question is, if C major is correct, why are all of the other ones wrong? In order to explain this to you, I want you to have a look at the piano right here. So, all of these notes, we have 12 notes, they're all a distance apart that we call half a note. So, you want to not walk here on the white bit, you want to put your finger here and then walk this way so that you're going to reach every single note, okay? And then here. If I walk here, it sounds a lot different than when I walk there, okay? So when I do this, I'm playing what we call half notes all the time. So it doesn't matter if you go from white to black, or from black to white, or here from white to white. Every time when you hear the next note is half a note. So a half note, and I would like to abbreviate that with an H, okay? Half. Again, it does not matter if we go from white to white, from white to black, from black to white. But if we play two half notes, we get a whole note, of course. So from here to here is half, from here to here is also half. So therefore from here to here is a whole note. Okay, so whenever you skip a note, we're talking about a whole note. So C to D is a whole note because we're skipping this note right here. D to E is a whole note because we're skipping this note right here. Even though it looks the same as right here, look, this distance is exactly the same as here and here. But because there's no note in the middle, we're not skipping a note. So this is only half a note. So pay attention to that very important. From here to here, we skip a note, whole note. We skip a note, so this is a whole note. And here we don't skip a note, so it's half a note. Whole note, we use W. So now we're going to build a pattern for that C major scale, okay? So if we have a look, as I said, we only play wide notes, Okay, so we have to figure out what the steps are. So as I said, from here to here, because we're skipping a note, we play a whole note. Okay. So write down a W. So now I went from C to D. Now I want to go from D to E because I have to play the white notes for C major. Okay, so from D to E. I'm skipping a note, so again, a whole note. Ooh, that's a little crooked, but anyway. So now I'm on E, right? So I did C, whole note, D, whole note, E. Now I have to move to F because I'm staying on the white notes. And you know, this is only half a note. So we're going to write down half a note. Okay. So for now, the C major skill, we start here whole note, whole note, and then half a note, this distance right here. Now we have to move on to the G because we stay on white notes. So there's a black note in between, there's a note in between, so it's a whole note. So write that down, whole note. And we can already see that it's going to be the same for A 
and for B because there's black notes in between. So we can write those down as well. And now all we have to do is go back to C. So we're on B, go to C. There's no note in between, so that's half a note. Okay, so now we have this pattern, WWH, WWWH. And this pattern is the pattern for the C major scale. Now, we have a lot of major scales. We're going to do 17 in this bit of the course. So if every major scale would have a different pattern, that's going to be such a ball breaker, okay? So I can already tell you that that is not the case. This code, this pattern, works for every major scale. You can simply start on any note. Let's zoom out a little bit. You can simply start on any note, let's say C, and then add a whole note, so we end up on D, add a whole note, so we end up on E, add a half note, so we end up on F, etc. And we can do that, and we will always end up on a major scale. So you may be wondering, but Mark, we already have all of these scales, because when I start on A, I add a whole note, so I end up on B, I add a whole note, so I end up on C, etc etc but let's have a look at the piano to see if that's actually correct so when i start on a i have to play a whole note so i skip one play the b that's correct and now i have to play a whole note again so skip wait there's no note to skip here so i actually have to skip this note right here and i will end up on here okay so a b c is not correct because we're ending up on a black note not on the c it's a D-flat or a C-sharp. So now we're going to take these uh, seven scales that you already entered. And again, the C major scale is correct. But we're going to figure out the correct scales for all of the other ones. So let's put that on the board and, and we will do this together and enter all of the correct scales. So before we're going to write down all of these scales on the board, I want you to take your resource file, the ones you're working on, um, you're probably working on three pages by now, and I want you to put that code WWH, WWWH on top of that page. The reason I didn't print them on there is because we're going to use these pages later on for different types of skills and different types of exercises. So. I didn't want to put that on there because we sometimes may use a different code, but I want you to put WWH, WWWH on there right now. I also want to give you a little idea of why these skills are useful because right now we're going to invest a lot of time to figure them out. Um, and the whole idea is that these skills are going to tell you when you play a song, which notes you can play and which notes you don't have to think about, which notes you can ignore. So let's say A major. If you know that a song is written in A major, then you already know which notes you don't have to play and which notes you can focus on. And that's going to be super helpful later. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out A major and B major together. And then you're going to fill out D, E, F and G major yourself. And then later on, I will check that to see if you actually managed to do that. So for now, let's figure out A and B major and then you can do the other ones yourself and we will check that out later. Okay, so if you have a look at your resource file, you will have A and B major with the ending notes and you're already putting all the notes in between as well. Okay, so with all of the notes filled in, it will look like this and this is already correct. You have the correct notes there, but we do have to decide is a note, let's say the C, is it just a C? Is it a C sharp? Or is it a, a C flat? Okay, that's very important to figure that out. Now, one thing you can be sure of is that the first note and the last note, the A and the B in this case, are going to be correct. Okay, so for A major, it's just an A. For B major, it's just a B. The name of the scale is always going to be the first note in your scale and this note is always just the name of the scale. So A major is going to be A. We also have A sharp major. So then the first note would be A sharp. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So right now we're going for A major and B major. So these notes are correct already. And now we're simply going to walk on the piano. 
Okay. And we're going to start with A major. So A. Now we have to take a whole step. So we skip one note and we play B. Okay. So B is correct. I'm going to circle that in a bit. And then we have to take a whole step again. So skip one note, which is this, and move up here. Okay. So A, B, and this note right here. The question is always, is this the D flat or the C sharp? And that's why we already filled this in to help us out. Look, it has to be a C. So the B is correct, as I said. And the C is this black note right here. This note. So I have to name it C sharp, okay? Because if it's a flat, it would be D flat, but that's not possible because the next note I have to use is C. And that's why I like to fill them in like this. So C sharp is the next note in my A major scale. So what we did is we did whole note. We started here, whole note, whole note, and now we have to do half note. Remember, whole, whole, half. Okay, so we did. We started here. Whole note, whole note. Now we have to do half a note. So just the next note is going to be this one, the D. Okay, so moving here, which is the next? Ah, it is the D, so that's correct. And I can simply fill out the D right there. Cool. So now moving on. I'm on D. I just did my half note, so now I have to do a whole note. So I'm on D, skip a note, play the next. Okay, so the next one is E. Ah, that's there, so that's convenient. Okay, and now we have to move on. We have to do another whole note. So from E, I have to skip a note and then play this one right here. Now this note, as you know, hopefully, is either an F sharp or a G flat. So we have to see, is it F sharp or G flat? Ah, it says F, so I have to make this into an F sharp. So now this one is correct as well. So now I'm on F sharp right here, and I have to do another whole note. Okay, so I skip a note, play another note. Now, is this, is this going to be A flat or G sharp? Let's have a look. The only option left is G, so we have a G sharp. And now we have all of the notes in. Let's check if that's correct. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Let's listen. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. That is correct. So, now that we have this, you can actually draw it in the piano, okay? So you have this, C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Please draw that in the piano. So color in the dots for A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Put a little dot, like with a red pen or some color, in that file. So you actually have that visually as well as uh, literally, you know, alphabetically written down there, okay? Let's do the same with B major, and then I want you to, you already have C major done, so then I want you to move on with D, E, F, and G, and do them by yourself, and then I'm going to check that for you to make sure that you have the correct answers. So, B, we have to start with the whole note, so skip a note, we're going to end up on this note right here. This can be D flat or C sharp. Let's see what we have. Ah, we have to make a C. So, C sharp. Now we have to do another whole note. So, I'm on C sharp. I have to skip a note, and then this note is the next, okay? Now, I'll tell you a little secret. We already know it has to be a sharp, because this one is a sharp. So, we're usually going to stick to, look, sharp, sharp, sharp. Here, it's going to be the same. So, the next one is going to be sharp as well. If I have to pick between sharp and flat, from now on, it's going to be sharp. So, B, C sharp, D sharp. So, I did a whole note and a whole note. Now, I have to do a half note. So, I'm on D sharp and I have to do a half note. So, I'm simply going to do one and I'll end up on E. Half note. 
half note done. Now I have to do three whole notes, okay? Let's see if we can remember this to speed things up a bit. So E, gonna skip a note, F sharp, because we know it has to be a sharp, skip a note, G sharp, because we know it has to be a sharp, skip a note, A sharp, okay? Whole note, whole note, whole note. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Okay, so for B major, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Which basically means that we have five black keys in there. Listen. Okay, and that sounds correct. So right now we have A, B, and C. So three skills done already. Please, right now, move to your resource file and finish um, D major, E major, F major, and G major. Pause the video, and once you're done, I want you to put in sharps, but it could also be flats, okay? So be careful, it could also be flats. And make sure to finish that using the WWH, WWWH right now. We're heading into the practice bit. This is your practice for these skills. So check that out right now. See if you can find all of these skills and then pause the video because as soon as you're back, I'm going to reveal these skills to you. Okay, so don't worry, I blurred the image on purpose. Just in case you're still watching and you haven't figured out your um, skills yet. But I'm going to reveal the first one, the D major skill in three seconds. So three, two, one, and this is the skill. So I want you to check if this is correct, if this is what you actually have on your resource file. D, E, and then we go to F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D, okay? So um, make sure you have that. And then the second one, I'm gonna reveal that in three, two, one. E, we have F sharp and G sharp, A, B, C sharp and D sharp and E. So I hope you got that correct as well. Make sure, look, we're doing a whole, a whole, and a half note. Whole, 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 half. Okay, the next one, the F major skill. I'm gonna reveal that in three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, F, G, A, B flat. Okay, there's a B flat. B, if you had A sharp, you have two A's, okay, F, G, A, A, that's weird. We wanna have F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. And then the final one, G major, revealing that in three seconds, three, two, one. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. There's only one sharp in here, and it's the F sharp. So I hope you had these skills written down correctly. We're gonna to be toying quite a lot with skills in this course. If you didn't, don't worry, it's not the easiest thing to do, but make sure that you actually have your resource files printed and then write the correct skills in there. And you can also draw little dots in your piano so you see exactly which notes are in there. So right now on your resource file, you should have your scale name and then the correct notes written down, okay, below the piano, and also those notes represented with a little dot or little X or something in your piano so you can actually visually see it. Now, I'm also going to give you a little bit of homework right now. What I want you to do is to take the other resource files that you still have empty, and I want you to Put in the C sharp, the D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp major skills. So you're gonna start on C sharp, you're gonna end on C sharp, and you're gonna do exactly the same. So you're gonna write D, E, F, G, A, B, C sharp. And now you have to figure out if there's any notes right here. Now, when there's a sharp in the beginning, okay, these notes will also get sharps if they get anything, most likely, okay? So you're not gonna see C sharp, E flat, whatever, right? So it's most likely gonna be sharps. So C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp, please 
put them on your resource file right now. C sharp in the beginning, C sharp in the end, and fill up all of the other notes. You can do that right now. And then for your homework, I want you to figure out exactly which of these notes have sharps and um, and which are just the normal notes. And I want you to do the same thing for flats, okay? So we're gonna have D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. So there's 10 skills in total that I want you to do on your own without me, and then later on in this video, I will come back and check them with you and see if you actually managed to do them correctly. So go ahead and do that right now. As soon as this video resumes, I will have the answers for you. You're of course free to don't do anything and simply wait for me to tell you the answers. But if you actually want to learn to do this stuff, use that WWH, WWWH formula and you'll be able to figure this stuff out in no time. And it's so helpful if you do this yourself. If you allow me to do all the work, then you're just not learning anything. Okay, so do it right now, pause the video, and by the time you'll be back, I'll have the answers for you. Okay, so I hope you had a good time figuring these out. If you haven't done so already, I've blurred the board just to be sure, and I will be revealing the C-sharp major skill in three seconds. One, two, three, here we go. So the C-sharp major skill is relatively easy in the fact that every node carries a sharp. So we have C-sharp, D-sharp, E-sharp, F-sharp, G-sharp, A-sharp, B-sharp, and C-sharp. So I hope you managed to figure that out. Again, if you didn't, this is quite advanced stuff. So don't beat yourself over the head with it. Let's move on to the D-sharp major skill. And I was a little bit naughty. Um, this skill is a bit tricky. So if you had trouble figuring out this skill, have a look right now. We have D sharp, E sharp, and then an F with a cross, okay, or an X. And that's something that I didn't tell you yet. I hinted towards it in the uh, note name lesson that we can have something as a double sharp. So if you had D sharp, E sharp, and then an F with two sharps, that was correct. But we also note it by simply putting a little X sideways so that you know, um, well, well, actually it's not sideways, it's just a little X so that you know that it's a double sharp. Okay, so D sharp, E sharp, F double sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, C with an X again, so that's a C double sharp, and then D sharp. So I'm sorry that I didn't tell you this before, but I wanted to see if you were able to figure it out by yourself. If you did so, congratulations. If you didn't, I mean, I really did not expect that you did, okay? So if you haven't done so, then still a very good job on you for figuring out the other notes. Let's have a look at the F sharp major scale. So we have F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, that's the only regular note, and then C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, and F sharp. Hope you got that. And then G sharp. So it's G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, and then an F double sharp again. So we have the cross, okay? And then for A sharp, it's A sharp, B sharp, C double sharp. So again, an X or a cross. And then D sharp, E sharp, F double sharp, G double sharp, and finishing up with A sharp. So now let's have a look at how you did with the flats. I'm very curious to see what you did with the flats. So again, I have blurred the answers because maybe you weren't ready yet, but I am going to reveal the D flat major skill in three, two, one. Here we go. So the flats are in general a lot nicer to work with than the sharps when it comes to skills, because as you can see right here, we uh, don't have any doubles yet, so D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat, and then F and C are just regular notes, okay? So D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D flat. Let's have a look at E flat major. Also here, a lot more clean than uh, its brother or sister, the D sharp major. So E flat, 
FG, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E flat. Let's have a look at G flat major. This one, everything is a flat except for the F. So G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, G flat. Let's check out A flat major, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. And then B flat major. B flat, C, D, E flat. The E flat is the only other note that has been flattened. And then F, G and A. So I hope that you did quite all right in this lesson. I know it's a lot of information, especially the first time. And you may mainly think, dude, I now know so many skills, but what do I have to do with that? What is the use of it? Well, we're going to figure that out quite soon. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to do with this information. Basically, if you think about it, most of the course will revolve around this. So make sure that if you made a mistake, take a little break, an hour or two, or maybe a day, and then the, uh, the skills that you did not manage to fill in correctly, try them again. You can print the resource file as many times as you want, or you can always change the name of the scale because the files are empty, right? You can put your own name. So let's say the D flat major scale, the F sharp and the A sharp, if you did not manage to get them correctly, simply put them on a resource file and try again, maybe tomorrow. We are now going to move on to lesson 1.4, where we are going to actually play these scales with the correct finger position, which is really important. And there's also daily skill practice exercise in that lesson. So if you want to practice your skills, which is something that you should be doing if you want to become really good at playing the piano, it's one of these things that you just have to do. You don't have to do it super often, but it's good to do it now and then. Um, then the next lesson is absolutely going to be worth your while. It will be mainly a practical lesson, whereas this one was mainly theoretically based, right? That lesson is really going to involve the piano. So if you can, make sure you have a piano with you at the moment you're watching that lesson. I want to thank you so much for watching this far. If you enjoy this course, you can leave a review. It takes you about 30 seconds and it really helps me and also other students to find this course and it helps them because you can actually tell them what you thought of the course and like I said, it's a 30 second um, thing you can do. So make sure to leave a positive review if you like this course. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at pgmpianofans at gmail.com. For now, let's move into lesson one. Point four. Okay, so thank you so much for watching part one of this course. If you want to keep on watching, please head over to pgmpiano.com. You can watch the entire 20 hour course right there. You can also find the ultimate piano course there, as well as over a thousand lessons for specific songs. There's no ads on pgmpiano.com and you can watch all of the lessons as many times as you want, of course. And the resource files are located there as well. Make sure to use your special discount coupon virtual to get 30% of any membership for as long as you remain a member. And keep in mind, I can simply not offer this entire course free here on YouTube because first of all, the video will be too long. There will be too many ads. And also it took me actually a couple of months to record and edit this entire course. And I cannot just always give stuff away for free. Sometimes I can, and sometimes I just have to pay the bills, the electricity, the food, the mortgage. Um, you can hopefully understand that as well. So make sure to check out the entire course at pgmpiano.com. I want to thank you so much for watching here. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below or send an email to pgmpianofans at gmail.com. For now, all I've got left to say is keep playing.